and I was lucky enough to have joined the RAF at the right time. Because, of course, they didn't allow women to do that before. In fact, aeroplanes have been designed around men. So one of the arguments against having women in were that they didn't fit. <laughs> and I read some research a couple of years ago about, um, about NASA when they first looked at the astronaut program. And what happened was um, they asked a doctor in the 50s to decide what was the ideal astronaut. Of course, he did all his research and he decided that women were the better astronauts. <laughs> Mainly because we're smaller. And that means we use less oxygen, which means there's less of a fuel payload, so there's a complete saving. The argument to counteract that is that we talk so much we'd burn more oxygen, but <laughs> I'm not yet to be convinced of that yet. <laughs> Brilliant. And they did actually allow 13 women to start the training along with seven men. But then they decided that you had to be a fast jet pilot if you were going to be an astronaut. And, of course, that was something that women weren't allowed to do at that time. My theory is that in 1969, it was unacceptable for a woman to be the first man on the moon. <laughs> but flying is an elitist world. Make no bones about it. Only one in a thousand people, whether they be male or female, will get through to a fast jet cockpit. And I was the seventh girl to start the flying training system and I just happened to be the first to make it. It's a challenge. It's a really tough training system. And I had a few extraordinary challenges to overcome. A fighter pilot? You can't be a fighter pilot. Look at women drivers. <laughs> women can't read maps. <laughs> you won't be able to drive once a month. <laughs> Fly, even. <laughs> Your boobs won't take the G-force. They'll be down to your knees. <laughs> and from a doctor, true story, your womb might pop out. <laughs> well, you certainly won't be able to drink enough beer, but boy, did I prove them wrong on that one. Trust me. <laughs> And I've been asked whether actually I just really wished I was a guy. Too right. Because I'd like you now to imagine yourselves back in that aeroplane, only this time you're wearing all your flying kit. Now, flying kit starts right at the basics. Starts with nice long johns, which in my day were only wide fronts, but now they have feminine versions of them as well. <laughs> a long-sleeved white T-shirt, then a green top over that, a flying suit and then something called an immersion suit. For any of you who have ever been diving, it's like a dry suit. And this is a big rubber suit that's got socks on and rubber seals here and here. And you pull, pull it over your head and it's sort of rubber attack. Somebody's really smiling at the back there. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and a big zip that does it up. You're wearing this and you're strapped to an ejection seat for seven hours crossing the Atlantic. Now, this is not business class. <laughs> There's no toilet, and you need to pee. Well, I've always said it's like being at the theatre, and I was just amused because, sorry, lady who I was listening to, um, a lady just said, is this just like being at the theatre, when there was a huge queue in the ladies just now? And it is just like that. Guys, sorry, you pop up, you go to the loo, you come back, what do we do, girls? Join a queue. Well, it's the same because, again, everything had been designed around the men. And they had this specially designed plastic bag with super absorbent sponge inside and very narrow opening at the top. <laughs> <laughs> and an, an extra zip down here. And an extra zip that... What, well, what happened? They used to... Um, <laughs> we, had, we had mirrors, all right, in the front. And, I, of course, I never peeped, honest. But I'm told this is what happened. They used to put the ejection seat in, uh, pin in, because I'm told you wouldn't want to be ejecting while you were doing this. But put the, the pin in, and they'd unstrap and um, unzip, use the pee bag, 
put it all away, and then it all folded down, job was done. <laughs> Great. What was I going to do? Well, the RAF took this very seriously indeed, and before long started the necessary paperwork. <laughs> and I was invited to take part in the RAF Women's Urinary Pads Trial. <laughs> This trial consisted of peeing on demand, and we've all, we all know what it's like, don't you? When you have to go to the doctor and uh, they say, go and do a sample, you know how hard that is? Well, this trial had a catch. They wanted me to pee sitting in a centrifuge at 7G. 7G? <laughs> so there you are, you're strapped into the seat, you've got your helmet and your headphones on, you start going round and round and round, and you're trying desperately to keep your head up Desperately to stay conscious even, when suddenly, through your headphones, someone shouts, Ready, steady, pee. 